Hey guys, welcome to Chapel. Today we are going to be talking about one of my favorite um, things in the Bible. It's the Ten Commandments. So if you have your Bible, go ahead and get it out or turn it on. And we are going to be in Exodus chapter 20. So we are going to be talking about the Ten Commandments. And I know a lot of you guys know them already. But if you don't, then we're going to go through a really simple way to remember them, okay? So let's pray first and then we'll get started, all right? God, I thank you for our time together. I thank you for your word and your goodness that you share with us. God, I pray that you would help us in this time, help us to remember that you are good and you care for us and just be with us today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so go ahead and get your Bible out. We're in Exodus chapter 20. And we are going to be in the very beginning of the chapter. So when we talk about the Ten Commandments, um, we're in the book of Exodus, and Moses actually, well, probably wrote the book of Exodus. And ex Exodus actually means exit. So when they were exiting the promised land, <laughs> um, so it was... Um, when we talk about the Ten Commandments, they were these two big ginormous stone tablets that God gave to Moses. Um, so he was on what's called Mount Sinai, and it's where God spoke to him. And so he gave him these laws, his instructions pretty much, um, to bring back down to the people for them to know what God's instruction manual was. So a lot of times we ask for instructions um, for this crazy life. Well, the, this is them right here. So um, we're gonna go ahead and get started and I'm gonna read through it and then we will break it down, okay? And God spoke all these words saying, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them for I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children of the third and the fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing steadfast love to thousands and those who love me keep my commandments. That's a big deal. You shall not take the Lord your God's name in, in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter or your male servant or your female servant or your livestock or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in the six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and mother, that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male servant or female servant or his ox or donkey or anything that is your neighbor's. So right there, we just went through 17 verses. We went through verses one through seven of chapter 20 and God laid down the law, literally. Um, he was very specific. He didn't say, well, maybe once in a while you can do this. No, he said, you shall not do this. Now, I don't know how well you guys listen to parents or grandparents or uncles or aunts or whoever you live with, but when they say you shall not do something, they usually really mean it. So we probably should listen to them. If they say you shall not put your hand on that stove, it might be because it was flaming hot two seconds ago and they don't want you to burn yourself. 
usually when they tell you not to do something, it's for a good reason. When I tell my son, who's two, when I say, Titus, don't run into the street, and then I go and pull him away from the street and he thinks mommy's keeping me away from something, it's not that I'm keeping him away from something, I'm keeping something bad from happening to him. He says, I don't want him to get run over, right? Because I love my son. But if I didn't do that, if I just let him run out into the street, you would think, you don't love your son very much, Miss Douglas. You don't love him at all. So when God gives us these rules, these commandments, he's giving to the, us to um, these rules and commandments because he loves us, because he wants to make sure that we are doing the best we can and we are taking care of the best way possible. So when we read through all of this, you probably heard a whole lot of stuff and we're going to break it down, okay? So the first one um, is you shall have no other gods before me. So when you look at this verse, this is in verse 3, it says you, you shall have no other gods before me, none. Now when it says gods, it's a little g, a lowercase g, it's not a capital G. And it, a lot of times in the Bible when it, says, when it has a capital G, that's God like our God. But when it's a little g, a lowercase g, that is usually a false God. It's not a, a God that people should follow. It's a God that um, is not good. It's, a, it's not real. So when it says a little g, you shall have no other gods before me, that could mean a whole bunch of stuff. Now you're probably going, Miss Douglas, um, I don't like sit there and bow down to this troll doll or something like I don't do that so I don't bow down to other gods well how often are you looking at your phone how long are you watching TV how long are you playing football instead of sitting there spending time with God or even reading your Bible at all I've been guilty of that I would rather look at my phone and play games than read my Bible some days and that's because we're just sinful people, we are. So when you're saying, Miss Douglas, I've never done that. It, mm, you probably have. <laughs> um, so we have one God and we need to make sure that we do not put other gods before him. So then we go into verse two and that's in, I'm sorry, um, commandment number two in verse four. And it says, you shall not make a carved image or anything like it. And that sounds super strange. So we talked about having nothing above God, but this is talking more about what we just said, like bowing down to other stuff. And so the people that he's talking to, that's what they did. They made carved images of things. They had things that they thought of more highly than God. We aren't to do that. God specifically tells us, you shall not make yourself any kind of thing above me. You shouldn't do that because I'm God. God is not me. <laughs> God is a jealous God because he loves us so much that he wants to make sure that we're not off, you know, straying away. He wants to make sure that we're focused, right? <clears throat> so then we go into verse three and it's... Um, Commandment number three, I'm sorry. And it says, you shall not take the Lord's name in vain. This means we are to use the Lord's name with respect. So a lot of times we hear cuss words with God's name in it, and that's not good at all. That's really, really bad. God is really sad when he hears that. It hurts his heart. It hurts his heart to hear someone say something that is disrespectful about him. Um... Where to use God's name in a way of praise and adoration and thanksgiving, not in a way of anger and cursing. So all of these um, so far are all about God. I want you to remember that, okay? So then we look at commandment number four. And commandment number four says, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. So if you notice in this section right here, it says, it talks about verse eight. Remember the Sabbath day to keep and keep it holy. 
Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall do no work, uh, you shall not do any work, and you or your sons and your daughters, it lists all these people. And then in, it goes down in verse 11 and it says, For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. So even God rested. I don't think God rested because he was tired. I think God rested to give us an example. To give us an example of you need to have a day where you sit, you're quiet, you focus on God. You focus on just clearing your head and praising God for who he is. Because I know that I've been guilty of not having a very good Sabbath. Even on Sunday, um, especially pastors, my husband's a pastor, uh, it's very hard for us to rest. So some days we kind of use Saturday as our Sabbath. Like we aren't going to do anything on Saturday. This is our day to rest and to focus and to get ready for Sunday. So that might be what you do. But a lot of times they will use Sunday as the Sabbath because you are going to worship with other people as well. So then, th that is um, to keep God's day special and set apart. That is a day to rest and give thanks. Um, and then verse five says, honor your father and mother. Now I know y'all are all great at this, right? <laughs> um, so when, when, we honor, when we honor our father and mother, it means we're being respectful. We're obeying the first time. Your mom's not having to sit there saying, um, do the dishes, hello, get off the Xbox, whatever. Like, you're like, okay, yes, I'm going to go do that right now because you asked me to because I'm going to respect you. Now, there was this lady that I knew a long, long time ago, and she was really old. She was like over 100 years old. And one day, her daughter, I believe, asked her, mom, why do you think you've lived so long? And she said, because in the Bible it says, honor your father and mother and you shall live a long life. And that's what she did. She said, I always honored my father and mother. So I always remember that because I thought, wow, that's how much that meant to her heart. That's how much she really, really focused on that. So I thought that was really cool. Um, and then we go on to, you shall not murder. Now you're probably going, Miss Douglas, uh, there ain't no way I ever murdered nobody. You might be six years old and you're going, Miss Douglas, uh-uh. But <laughs> have you ever hated someone in your heart? Have you ever been so mad at somebody that you hated them? And maybe it was your sibling and you're like, oh, they just made me so mad and I just hate them. You probably really hated them in your heart and guess what that's called murder so I think so far we've all done just about every single one of these so then it goes on to number seven it says you shall not commit adultery now y'all aren't married yet so um, this is one you need to remember for when you are married um, you need to stay faithful to who you marry you need to stay faithful to the one that you say, yes, I'm gonna love you forever and always. Well, when you get married, sometimes that person might make you mad. That person might really frustrate you or do something you really don't like. Well, God is telling us right here, even if that happens, you are to stay faithful and stay with that person. It's a big deal. God is very committed to marriage and he is he looks at it in a very special and sacred way. So then in verse, um, in commandment number eight, it says, you shall not steal. Don't take what someone else has. <laughs> Don't take anything that's not yours because when you are thankful for what you have and you are a cheerful giver, you want to give to other people, then you don't have a desire to steal, especially if you have God in your heart. If you have God in your heart, don't, a lot of times those desires of things you used to do are gone. Or maybe you need help for them to go away and you need to pray about it. But don't take what's not yours. <laughs> God tells us right here, just don't do it. Don't steal. 
And then in commandment number nine, it says, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. So some of y'all are going, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> That's okay. Um, it means don't lie. Always be truthful. I don't know anyone that has ever said, I really love it when people lie to me. It's so awesome. No, it makes you feel like you weren't worth the truth. I don't like feeling that way. I don't think you do either. Because a lot of you guys have come to me and said, he lied to me. And you got real upset. Remember? I think some of you are remembering. And so then the 10th commandment says, you shall not covet. So some of y'all are going, what does covet mean? It means you don't, you need to be content with what you have. You don't need to want what other people have. So what's um, really great is there's a verse in the book of Mark, and I'm going to read it to you. And it's Mark chapter 12. It's going to be verses 28 through 31. And it says, and this is Jesus talking. Make sure I'm in the right spot. Sorry, guys. But if it is by the Spirit of God that I drive out demons... Oh, I might have the wrong one. I'm sorry, guys. Oops, wrong book. I knew that didn't sound right. Ah, here we are. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? Jesus answered, the most important one is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandment than these. So it's very simple to please God. Love God, love people. It's that easy. If that's what you're focusing on is loving God and loving people, you're going to hit every one of these commandments just fine. Now, we're not perfect and we're going to mess up, but that's where Jesus comes and gives us grace and all of these good things. So one thing I want you guys to, um, to notice is the first four commandments, they are all vertical. They are all commandments that have to do with you and God. So when it says... You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make, you know, idols to bow down to. You shall not take the Lord's name in vain and remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. Those are all commandments that are vertical. The other ones, the other six are all horizontal. They go toward people. So the ones that are vertical describe love for God. And the ones that are horizontal describe love for other people. That's something that I've always kind of has always kind of stuck with me um, because I, I need to remember how to treat other people. Now, if you're going, Miss Douglas, there's no way I'm going to remember all of these. I have a solution for you. And some of you might know this, which is really great. I hope you can do it with me. So we're going to do the Ten Commandments with our fingers. That's how we're going to remember. So the first one is you shall have no other gods before me. So one God. That's how we're going to remember the first one, one God. The second one is, you shall not make yourself an, um, a carved image. So do not bow down to idols. Now pull the, hold up two fingers, and one's going to bow down to the other. So one God, then the second commandment, do not bow down to idols. The third commandment is, you shall not take the Lord's name in vain. So you're going to take your three fingers, and you're going to cover your mouth. So you shall not take the Lord's name in vain. The fourth commandment is to keep the Sabbath holy, right? So remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. So we're going to do make like a church with our four fingers. So two and two make four. So you make like a, a building like that. The fifth one is honor your father and mother. <laughs> this one kind of makes me laugh. <laughs> um, you're going to hold up your hand. Don't slap your mama. That's how I remember it. Um, so five fingers, hold up your hand. Don't slap your mama. Mm -mm. <laughs> she might slap you back. Don't do that. <laughs> so the sixth one is you shall not murder. Now you're going to hold up your hand, and it's like you're, you're killing something. So that's six. The seventh one is you shall not commit adultery. So this is staying faithful in marriage. So hold up seven. Marriage is for two people, not five. <laughs> 
Number eight, you shall not steal. So a lot of times in other countries, if you steal, they kind of cut off your hand or your fingers. So you're gonna hide your thumbs like you stole something. The ninth one is do not lie, right? So we're gonna kind of wiggle our thumb like our, our lie is out there, our little white lie or something. And then number 10 is don't covet. So you're gonna want what other people have, right? Don't covet. So this is kind of wanting someone else's stuff. So let's do them all together real quick, ready? One God, don't bow down to idols. Don't take the Lord's name in vain. Keep the Sabbath holy. Don't slap your mama. Do not murder. Marriage is for two people, not five. Do not commit adultery. Don't steal. Cut off your thumbs. You can kind of do it like this too. Don't tell a lie and don't covet. So I hope that helps you remember. Um, and I really want to encourage you while you're at home to remember these 10 commandments and really try and practice them. I know it's very hard with our siblings and our parents maybe we're not getting along, but we need to remember to be respectful and to obey and to love each other because that's how we get through all this craziness. All right, I love you guys. I hope you have a great week. Bye guys.